Welcome to our daily devotional series. As we continue our look at the prophecy of Jeremiah and asking the question, how is this relevant to us today? In chapters 30 and 31, which is where we're going to be in the next few days, God is talking to Israel, to Judah, about their restoration, about their return. Yes, they're going to be punished, but afterwards they're going to be restored and things will improve for them if they will follow God. Let's look at this, and let's look at the first eight verses of chapter 30 today as we're together. Jeremiah chapter 30, verses 1 through 8. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus says Yahweh, the God of Israel, Write all the words which I have spoken to you in a book. For behold, days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will return the fortunes of my people Israel and Judah, Yahweh says. I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. Now these are the words which Yahweh the Lord spoke concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus says Yahweh, We have heard a sound of trembling, of dread, and there is no peace. Ask now and see. If a male can give birth, why do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in childbirth? And why have all faces turned pale? Alas, for that day is great. There is none like it. And this is the time of Jacob's distress. But he will be saved from it. And it will be in that day, declares the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off your neck and will tear off your bonds, and strangers will no longer make them their slaves. Uh, Verse 9, But they will be a slave to the Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up for them. And we'll stop there. I said verse 8, but decided to go into verse 9. I think those in exile and those who will soon go in exile are realizing the calamity that is on Judah, that is on God's people. And the description there of a man giving childbirth and holding his gut is is the a picture of people in, in great distress and mourning. Why is this happening to us? What is going on? This is horrible. I cannot bear it. And God is saying, yes, it's horrible. Yes, it's terrible. But there is coming a day. And yes, we know from reading Jeremiah, that's going to be 70 years in the future for them, that everything will be restored. Now, as we continue through chapters 30 and 31, we'll see more about what this restoration entails and the fullness of time of that restoration. But look at the hope that God is giving them. And that's what I want us to focus on for today. Hope. What a great word. Hope from a biblical sense is not a wishful thinking, but hope is a blessed assurance. An assurance based on faith that God is God and God is going to take care of us. When we go through our lives today, when we face the trials and the the hard times and the world around us, we can get, we can get down, depressed or feeling oppressed. But for the child of God, there is hope. There is hope in this life in that God promises if we seek first his kingdom, all the things that we need will be taken care of. But more than that, there is hope in the life to come, in eternal life, that when God restores everything in that sense, when God returns, Christ returns, and we go to be with him in heaven, whatever all of that entails, here's what I know specifically. It is what heaven is made for us and we are made for heaven. It is how God designed us. It is how God designed heaven. And being the creator and the sustainer, know that everything he has planned for us is exactly as it should be and more than we can imagine. There is our hope. Yes, in this life, but in so much more. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, we thank you so much for the blessings that you give us each day. For the sun that shines, for the rain that comes, for the snow that falls, for the flowers that bloom, for the grass that grows, for the changes in the seasons, even the seasons where maybe we don't see as much green. 
Father, we know that you are in there. We know that you are behind these things. We know that you have set these things in motion and can control these things in our lives. Father, we thank you for the daily things in our lives, the food, the moments of joy, the moment when we see a beautiful sunrise or sunset and know that you are God, when we see the laughter and the joy of children. Father, help us to see your blessings in our life. And Father, we're thankful for those moments of hope, the reminders that are reminders of that great hope that we have when this life is over, when this earth, that th- earth is through. Thank you for that hope. Thank you for Christ who gives us that, that grace and that assurance when we are in him. Thank you for those that are participating in this and who study along with me on a day-in, day-out basis. Father, I pray that we are growing. Thank you again for Jesus. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for joining me and allowing me to join you as we spend time in God's Word. I do look forward to these, and I hope you do as well. Until the next time we're together, my prayer is, as always, that God will bless your day.